Yes, we are here in Florence at the Florence School of Revelation on the 24th of October 2014, one year after, almost to the day, the uh, adoption of the first list of projects of common interest uh, for the European energy networks. And the reason why we're here today is to look how and to take stock on how the first full process of identification of the list of PCI projects and then the investment request and more recently the uh, decision uh, still to be made public by the Commission on the funding through the uh, Connected Euro facilities has, uh, has proceeded and has gone. Um, it's a very important process. Uh, it's uh, the process through which uh, Europe is trying and will integrate the markets, uh, will address security supply issues in many areas of our continent. And this was the first time we ran this process. This process was introduced by the regulation on guidelines on trans-European network um, energy infrastructure, which was adopted uh, last year in May. So uh, we now have the visibility of all the procedures for cost-benefit analysis, how the cost-benefit analysis were implemented. Unfortunately, in the first round, the uh, methodologies which ENSOE and ENSOC have been developing were not yet available. Um, so there is experience to be drawn out of that. Uh, the first uh, cross-border cost allocation decisions also now been adopted, both at national level, in one case at European level. So there is a one year of experience very hectic year uh, on which we should reflect and uh, the outcome of this reflection, outcome of the discussion today should inform how we will run the process for the second round of PCI selections. This round has just been started by the Commission. Uh, the idea is that the next list will be adopted sometime uh, towards the end of next year. So we will run another very hectic year and the discussions today and the discussion elsewhere during this period are instrumental in trying to make the process uh, always um, better and to try to actually meet the expectations of European energy consumers and citizens that we will have a network in the future fit for purpose. So my intervention at the workshop was about cross-border cost allocation, which is a very complicated word for how to share the investment costs of projects of common interest uh, between countries. And we've been working on that topic already for a while and we made some recommendations in the past where we said uh, that we think countries could innovate in the way they do this kind of agreements between them and now what is very nice is that at this workshop for the first time we are bringing some cases together some regulators some some governments that have actually done this kind of agreements and we are checking to what extent uh, what they've done is in line with what we uh, advise them to do and the conclusion is that they already are doing some innovation so i'm very happy to see that and also we see that the practice is richer than what we uh, imagined and we based on what we see we can actually give already a few additional recommendations so can, we can start spreading some good practices one example of a good practice is that we see at least one, actually several projects that uh, do not only simulate the costs and the benefits, they also test it if some of the benefits actually are real. So they do a market test to see if some of these projects have a commercial value and they take into account this test in their agreement on how to share the costs. Because of course, if some of the costs can be carried commercially, they do not need to be allocated between the member states. For me, cost-benefit analysis in the framework of the 10E regulation is a great concept. A great concept, but we did not yet have the tools when we started with it. So these tools have been developed now by ENSOG and ENSOE. They have made a lot of progress, and I'm looking forward to seeing more progress in the future when the next cycles of PCI lists will be established. Ah, we need an academic perspective because uh, this is a tool that has been used uh, by many industries and many businesses. But it is an economic tool, so there is theory behind it. And if we can apply that uh, theory, we will have a better method. We can help the industry uh, by being like, uh, by providing feedback to them. Uh, I'm very happy uh, that we met a lot of people who are really aware about the importance to invest in infrastructure, in ener energy infrastructure right now. So. Um, there is a clear understanding that these investments need smart ways of how to, uh, to tackle them 
and uh, NSOE is happy to provide with TYNDP uh, with our 10-year network development plan, including the CBA process, uh, a tool for smart investment planning. Uh, having said that, it's important as well to realize that um, permitting processes are at the very heart of the challenges uh, today. Uh, and we uh, must be very careful not to delay uh, the needed infrastructure uh, build-up, uh, which um, is, um, is uh, planned right now. Important as well is uh, to understand that electricity projects have very specific characteristics. So, of course, it's a cost, uh, about cost and benefit, but it's far more as well about additional parameters like environmental uh, aspects, like security aspects, and so on and so on. Um, so, uh, and so e position uh, is a kind of reluctant to put money values on all of these uh, different aspects of a project. Uh, we um, we uh, give objective um, kind of uh, analysis of these uh, indicators and need uh, support for further uh, judgment in, in, in order to rank type of uh, projects. So Olivier Lebois, I work for ENSOC, the Association of Gas TSO in Brussels. I'm very pleased to be here in uh, not only in France, but also to see people that I don't have the habit to see and that means new, new questions, and this is very important because that's um, expectation that we can factor in our work. And I think that the work of ENSOG, speaking about CBA, is try to bring um, some structure, some, uh, some information that will help decision maker to better understand the uncertainty in which they will have to decide for a project of common interest. This is very important. And all the questions today show a very appetite for guidance on how to decide. We are very pleased to provide them, but we'll never replace uh, the decision. We'll never be able to mitigate this uncertainty, but to inform about it. So I think for that purpose, it is a very efficient workshop. Thank you. The European regulation on energy infrastructure introduced rules for allocation of cost of projects of common interest across countries. Some uh, national regulatory authorities ask the, the agency to better understand this new provision of the regulation. And the agency issued uh, in September 2013 a recommendation on cross-border cost allocation in order to facilitate promoters of projects of common interest in submitting requests and to help national regulatory authorities in treating these requests uh, of uh, cross-border cost allocation. The ACE recommendation has been taken into account in the last year by promoters and by NRAs in the first uh, experiences. Now, today, ACER is willing to learn from this experience and to provide an updated recommendation on cross-border cost allocation. Today, we are in Florence at the Florence School of Regulation to discuss experience and to improve this recommendation to facilitate development of infrastructure across Europe. Today we are here to discuss the first experiences on the cross-border cost allocation. We have seen uh, 12 cases uh, in this first year and we are now looking into the lessons learned and there are many lessons learned from these in view to develop the better uh, approach for the future and to make sure that all the parties concerned, the transmission system operators and the national regulators know how to carry out a cross-border cost allocation on the best way. Everything, of course, is always based on the cost-benefit analysis uh, that determines the quality. And we have also been discussing already today quite extensively on the cost-benefit analysis that the two ENSOs are working on. There are many lessons learned. Uh, I think we are all learning, the transmission system operators are learning, the regulators are learning, the commission is learning. Uh, one lesson learned, I think, is that we have to communicate uh, more on the conditions when grants for works are uh, available, for what type of projects, what type of externalities, and when they are not available, so as to make sure that the market delivers uh, most of the project that, as it is expected to deliver. All right. Um, the intention of my today's presentation is to cover 
three topics that I think are quite important in the uh, CBCA process. Uh, first of all, I'm going to uh, describe the details of the CBCA decision that our uh, office issued um, quite recently. It's a case where the new Polish Czech interconnector uh, was uh, award awarded a CBCA decision. I think what's quite important about this particular decision is that it actually allocates costs across border, which is, with the exception of the ACER decision, uh, not really the case um, for the other national decisions. Um, it also comes up with quite an innovative um, approach. Um, it's called conditional payment guarantees, uh, which provides, which uh, deliver quite uh, deliver a good deal for the end customers because the market can actually pay for the investment costs. Second, um, I'm going to give the audience some insight about what regulators face in practice when they are um, required to deliver a CBCA decision. And um, last but not least, I'm going. Um, my presentation talks about and discusses what are the implications of a CBCA decision for the uh, Connection Europe facility funding. Uh, this is quite important, and as we know, the Commission is quite strict about it. So I, I hope my presentation will provide some recommendations in that respect. This, uh, this conference is a very interesting occasion to share views with uh, the Commission, with academic researchers, um, with market players also, on all the challenges we see in terms of implementation of the TNE guidelines. And in this respect, the uh, example of uh, the Valdeson project brings some uh, interesting elements, interesting lessons about how to monetize some benefits uh, of a project which is quite specific because it relates to reinforcing a network within a member state and evaluating the potential benefits not only for this member state but also for the other ones which are uh, connected to, to that member state. There are three important things about the uh, gas infrastructure Poland Lithuania case. The first one is that we now have a binding decision uh, in a complex case involving four different member states. First, the NRA is the national regulators had six months to agree, which they couldn't. Then the case came to Acer. We had three months for the decision, and this is the first time that we have taken a binding decision. So I think it shows that overall the system uh, works and can deliver a binding decision within the periods prescribed. The second point is that this is an important project itself for the region because it will help to end the isolation of the Baltic States gas market. And the third point is that with the decision now in place, the process can proceed which means that the project promoters have requested for funding from the Connecting Europe facility. The Commission has to take a view and take a decision on this one. Then the project promoters have to implement. The NRAs have to think about how to uh, incorporate the amounts needed into the tariffs. And finally, ACER will evaluate the whole process and see how we can improve for the next round.